and I don't mean this in a bad way, but I feel like it's low carb. Like it's not. Yeah, it's absolutely. not super carb, but so it's almost still like a white wine. This is great. It's a low carb beer. No, no, that's <laughs> not what he meant. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this week, Dan shares some beers from Door County, Wisconsin. This is episode ninety-two of the Malting Hour. What's the half sound the hops got yeast that's beast? This is the Malton Hour where we talk about our drink and tell you what we think every other week. And if we get drunk, well, we might slur our speech. Got the gift of gab, the friends you wish you had. Join us for a drink, join us for a laugh. Time is never wasted, where you getting wasted? The Malton Hour here, people, people take your places. People, people take your places. People, people take your home. Welcome to the Malting Hour. I am one of your hosts, Tony. Joined always with Brandon Winninger. And to my left, Danny Pop. Hey man, how's it going? All right, hey guys, not hey man. <laughs> I looked at Dan when I said hey man. Hey man, how are you doing, Dan? This is weird, you're being nice. Shut up. Uh Brandon, how are you, buddy? <laughs> I'm all right, man. Awesome. What are we what are we what are we doing this week, guys? What's going on? Dan, you've curated. Thank you. Yeah. Curated another episode. Yeah, to continue with our travel episodes when we take a little trip. I went to Door County last weekend with the family and tried to stop by. I stopped by three different breweries, and then one of them I got from a store. So we have uh, four different breweries represented. Right. That's exciting. Yeah. In your trip to Door County, did you trip into a fire pit at all? <laughs> no, I didn't. Much better trip than we had. Yeah. I didn't fall into a Which fire pit. I should pit. say Door County is in Wisconsin for those. Correct. So yes, for those who don't know. Northern Wisconsin. Yes, there you go. Near uh, a certain... Um, we're not doing. Okay, sorry. We're not doing that. Near. A Did you drive by and lick the walls or something? Like no, I've been there. By near there. a certain conspiracy theorist, uh, football team. Brian Urlacher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers. What are we drinking first, Dan? All right, so I'm gonna kind of go sort of in order of when they were founded. Um, so this I like is, that you way to actually like curate this. You know, that's yeah, good, I man. Try, Thank I try. you. It also kind of goes in. Style wise, sort of that way, also, which I mean, you would think, yeah, breweries that started back then are kind of brewing the same styles, breweries that are newer, are a little newer styles. Um, so <laughs> this one is from one barrel, he trailed off on his thought. <laughs> yeah, I, <did. laughs> I lost, I lost Just trust me, it's good. Uh, like, so what I'm doing from one barrel brewing company, which is the, this is the one I did not go to, okay. Um, but I feel like I'm familiar with them. If you're familiar, there's also like one of the Budweiser's is like. <clears throat> 12 barrel or something I forget mm. um, that is true yeah because I tried their stuff before so this is Door County Trolley Red Cherry Lager Ooh. which cherries and apples are big things up there uh, 4.8% and I thought there would be something on the can and there is not mm. Clark can you get on that please right so, on top wait of that what list. is it one barrel yeah I can look it up. Door County Cherry Lager I like the can. The can design school cool. Looks like uh, uh, it's a Door County trolley red. Right? There's a trolley on it. Yeah. So it is brewed each summer as a nod to our friends who run the iconic Door County trolley around Wisconsin's finest peninsula. Bing. This mellow lager features additions of high quality dark cherry juice, giving a gorgeous deep ruby hue and a lovely cherry flavor without cloying sweetness. Available over the state in limited supply each summer. They weren't lying about the color. I just poured some. It's got a nice little, like a ruby, like a ruby red grapefruit juice color to it. And it smells ruby like cherry, baby. Rizzo. does smell really good. Mm. Laura, it's an interesting, interesting thing to put cherries with. Well, I forgot to say, so these guys are founded in 2012. 2012. So they're the oldest of the ones that you... There's two of them from 2012. I don't know which one's technically older, but yeah. Mm. Um, you just failed your curating test. <laughs> so I had to take mm. a second sip. The first sip I had, I think because I had the Kolsch, um, I was having like this weird... Metallic? Yes. Yep. And I still kind of have it. Uh, and it could be because we were drinking a Kolsch beforehand, and I just took another sip and swished it around, and I got less of it and more of the cherry yep. and the lager. Yeah, same yeah. here. It is really light, though. It's not like overpowering cherry. No. It's not sweet at all, like they said in the description. If you swirl it around, Brandon, and I don't know, Dan, if you're getting the same thing, I got less of that. I do think it is because we were drinking something else before mm-hmm. we, we started, and it has nothing, no reflection of this actual beer. No, like doing that, 
totally different taste. Like it's a good beer. That cherry flavor is really nice. It's not, yeah, the, like like it, you said, Dan, it's not sweet at all. It's good because it's super super subtle. Yeah, yeah, like e- but, easy easy drinking. And enough of it's there where it actually like stands out uh, in the beer. Yeah, like you know this summer it. beer. Yeah, yeah. It was, like, it'd be a good beer to sit around in the backyard uh, on a warm summer day to just you know sip on. Yeah. I would Maybe say. Like the the aroma is more cherry than the the flavor. Sure, um, but it's there. But I, I I like the way it smells. Like, and it is very much. It's like uh, I feel like I get like a I don't know if it's just it's it's like on my tongue. I get like the beginning of like it's gonna be a tart yeah beer, but it's not. It like, kind of stops after it. First I wonder if <clears throat> sorry. I wonder if it's a uh, the way our brain reacts to it because of the types of cherry beers that we've had in the past. That you are expecting like a little bit of a tartness or an over like overpowering like yeah. cherry flavor, and it was so it's it's pretty I mean it's pretty cold can right now but I held my last sip in my mouth for a minute and it, it is like dark fruit cherry like I know I said dark cherries that also could be a power suggestion but it's not like a sweet cherry or you know that kind of thing it's like a I just did what <clears throat> you said you did and I kept it in my mouth and kind of swished it around I got more of the balance of there it is my favorite word to never use balance of like the lager and the cherry flavor this is a, this is a really good beer i feel like i want more of these i i got a brief moment of maraschino cherry hmm. maybe that's in my head because maybe that's what i was looking for just to be like that would be interesting oh just um, feel like maybe your brain is doing that for like the cherry flavor. but like literally like on the sides of my on the side of my tongue like both sides it was kind of like that tanginess that you get for, you know that like little tart pop that i get from maraschino cherries um not bad at all i mean even without that this is still this is super approachable i really like it i like that i mean for me it's like a dry finish it keeps me wanting to sit more and more that's why i've already finished my pour i'm so thirsty i need more <laughs> so th- it was so dry it's like i drink nothing <laughs> is that what dry means you guys uh yeah that is a really tasty <laughs> really solid beer Door County Trolley Red Cherry Lager. I want From one barrel. More of these. So where does it say where in Door County, or does it just say uh, Door County? It's one of the. I think it says <clears> on the can <throat> what where in Wisconsin. Egg Harbor, Madison, think, actually. No, no, they have a location. Oh, in Madison, Madison so. Wisconsin, and Door County, Wisconsin. Yeah, they have. Yeah. I think it's in. Um, There's more than doors in Wisconsin. So I know that. Yeah, they have a tap room in Madison, which maybe that's where they produce their stuff too. I don't know, but I. Th- I think it's like Egg Harbor. Well, that's a lot closer to us. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't distinguish. But yeah. what, from my understanding, when you put multiple locations on a can, you produce from both locations. Yeah. Like, and it's their way I mean, of having right. one label yeah, and not having have to, like, that's to why, like, it's produced it. when... Like when Lagunitas opened up in Chicago, like immediately all of their labels say Chicago. Like it's it's on there, um, and I think I think do they have an East? Co- they might have an East Coast spot now too. I'm not entirely sure. I know Lagunitas. They, I don't think so. I think it's- they got a spot in Miami. I know that apparently, like somewhere down in Florida, because I was looking. Um, I keep looking at their jobs page, not because I'm looking to work for Lagunitas. You're trying to get me a job there. Yeah. Well, that too. But I I keep looking to see if they're hiring for the tap room. Um, <laughs> so it's still uh, open, right? No. Uh, but they there was listings for like these random jobs in like Miami. So um, I think they might have something down there. Though. Pronounce Miami. <laughs> oh, sorry. So yeah, the the Door County location is in Egg Harbor, which is a little like two thirds of the way up the little peninsula there. Mm-hmm. So past Sturgeon Bay, but not to Sister Bay, if you're familiar. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you're familiar with Wisconsin, which us being from the Midwest, now you live here, Dan, you are from the Midwest. Um, all right. uh, that was really good. Dan, good first choice. Good pick. Yeah. Way to go right off the bat. I thought that'd be a good opener. Yeah. Um, That's fantastic. And yeah, you got to get that. If you, anything Door County, you got it. Just check. going back to my thought, um, the Lagunitas page has... <laughs> The job is like so. The the location of, or the name of the location of the place that they were hiring for is uh, uh, Cerveciera La Tropical. Hmm. All right. So Lagunitas so, has something to do with that. Lagunitas, Brandon's but looking it's, for but a it, job, but it's not on their website. So just you know. Mm-hmm. 
Like, it's not listed as, like, one of their locations. They have a Seattle location, though. I know that. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, you know a lot about Lagunitas, man. Well, I just saw that when I was looking, <laughs> looking at the page. Well, they right. could be just sales reps. No, like, it says, like, visit us. It says uh, Petaluma, Chicago, and Seattle. Oh, weird. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll come back to Lagunitas after we drink this next beer. <laughs> What's next, Dan? So the next beer <laughs> is Door County Brewing Company's Little Sister, a wit beer. Also coming in at, oh, 5.4%. Never mind. I was dyslexic. 5.4%. Door County Brewing. Is that where we went? We, we had, I think they have that Pallet Jack IPA. Yeah. yeah. Pallet Record. Pallet, something yeah. like that. Pallet Record. Wait, no, Pallet. No. I think it's Pallet Record. There's a different one. Oh yeah, we're, no, it is pallet jack IPA. Like it's like yeah. a guy writing a pallet yeah, jack. Pallet we jack drank IPA. that uh, when we were at the bar, the Bitters Bar, where I did my shot. Oh yeah, Nielsen's we, Pub. Yeah, we can, yeah, Nielsen's Pub. Uh, that's a really good um, uh, sessionable IP, or uh, like it's like a session IPA or session maybe. Sorry, I went to a restaurant while we were up there, and I had the pallet jack IPA. Mm. I'm pretty sure their lines were dirty because it Ooh. just tasted a little off. Yeah, that's but I've had that years ago, and I liked it. And so. just to preface this, Door County Brewing is where we stopped on the way up there. That's right. Yeah. Yes. That long, long, long lines. Which is in Bailey's Harbor. Mm. Mm. Which is on the southern tip, like south of Sister Bay. You guys, this is why we do this show. We give out all this information that people are dying to know. Where which, did those guys go? Which is why I will read this can. Oh, thank you, yes. Sister Bay, which uh, Little Sister's the name of the beer again. Sister Bay takes its name from the two islands sitting offshore that, well, look alike. And just like real sisters, the little one is not as innocent as she seems. Oh boy. This pale and cloudy wit is, is brewed with equal parts Belgian Pilsner malt and wheat. A blend of coriander, orange peel, and other unique spices provide bright citrus and zesty notes. It's intriguing, mischievous, yet easy drinking. Okay, I don't know if I would call little sister any of that. That is... Made me very uncomfortable. Me too. Is it mischievous in the sense that it's like a 12% wit beer? No. No, no. 5.4. Hmm. Okay. And it's got a little sister riding a bike yeah. on the uh, can there. Made me uncomfortable, i got to be honest. That description. <laughs> but let's try the beer and let that be the judge. Ooh. Yeah, so Door County, I did... Um, Pop in here. I I actually went here when I went to Lambo, like I don't know, four or five years ago. Did you do the Lambo leap while you were there? I wasn't on the field, but it was I opening know. day against the Seahawks, and when they won, uh, the package won. When when was this? Uh, four or five years ago. I don't remember. Okay. It was my thirtieth birthday, so five years ago. How about that? You're not thirty. Five. You're not thirty-five either. Um, <laughs> you haven't even broken thirty. So I did go. <laughs> in, I went there, and they have a like, really cool. Side patio area, which I, you know, I didn't pay attention to see if it yes. was still there. The the side patio yeah. is there, Down and the uh, side patio. they had a band playing, and it was yep. like packed when I was there at the time. It wasn't it wasn't super packed when we went, but it, there was a lot of people there. And there was a band playing. We were like, "Wow, this is cool!" But then we also had then had to race to get to the ferry. <laughs> and oh yeah, <laughs> if you guys, if any of you uh, listeners do head there, I haven't even showed the guys this Ooh. yet. But I uh, slapped a couple stickers. Ooh. On there. Oh water. shit! Look at that. There's a hip hops and nice. a malting hour yeah. sticker out there. So mm. while I was there, and they opened at eleven, and I was there at like eleven ten. So there nice. was one other person in the the building when I was there. We were on our way to the farm, which is mm. like a petting zoo, oh. on our way out of uh, Door County. But um, yeah, so stop by there, grabbed a grab this, and um, yeah. What do you guys think of this beer? I haven't even sipped it yet. Brandon, have you taken a sip? I did. What do you think of this beer? What the funk? <laughs> there, there's like a, is it in my head? There's there's like a funkiness to it, like not a bad funk, like I a get Belgian yeast funk. Yeah, that's yeah. what it, that's what it. Yeah, yeah it's it's the, more for is light bodied and like it's very light, bodied. very light on the malt flavor. That yeast is coming through. Heavy like, coriander. Yeah, yeah, yeah heavy, heavy almost coriander. what it is. Like the coriander itself is almost. Lending it to be like a like a spiced beer. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to say like a pumpkin spice beer, but I have had a couple of pumpkin beers. That was the first thing that came to my head for how heavy this coriander is. It's like this reminds me of like a spice beer in a mischievous way. <laughs> oh, oh. Cor- coriander is the number one ingredient mm. listed on there. Oh, it's beer. the number one ingredient in this beer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there was no malt. It was just coriander. We just made a coriander tea and, um, it and put a shot so, of vodka in there. And then so. I, in my head, I was trying to figure it out, and I, I I spaced when Dan was reading it, 
but the uh, I was getting floral notes and lavender and rose hips are oh. in here. Interesting. I don't know who Rose is. They have ingredients. Lend in her hips. Oh, God, come on. Oh, maybe Dan. you didn't read that part. I yeah. Oh, or, so it's coriander, orange peel, a lavender, and rose. I hips. feel like I get lavender. Yeah, that's. Hmm. I don't know. I'm still getting the, like heavy coriander. I guess you could say that little sister is the lavender girl, huh? I feel like I coriander is like up front, and then the lavender is like the aftertaste. Right. Is it? Let me get that's in. that floral essence yeah, that I'm, I'm going back in. Yeah. Coriander. And I smell a little bit of the lavender on the nose. But yeah, it's heavy, like, yeast, coriander, yeah. lavender. Okay. Yeast, coriander. I I guess I don't really know. I've had stuff with lavender, but I guess I can't pick it out. I do get floral, so maybe that's, I guess that's what it is. Yeah. I've come to realize that I'm not a, oh, not come to realize. Uh, I've known for a while. I don't really care for coriander in beers. Which, I mean, if if you more. listeners have been listening for a while, you know that means in two months, Tony's mm-hmm. going to be on a, a coriander So here's pick. the thing. <laughs> 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 I'm waiting for someone to find me a coriander beer where I'm like, yeah, Clark can attest to this. Like, he and I have, uh, we have a beer uh, that we brewed a couple times called the Patriotic Lemon Party. And it is, uh, it's a, it's a wheat beer that have coriander in it. And the first time we made it, we're like, wow, this is so good. And it's got like lemon in it as well. Uh, and then the next batch, we were like, this is not something about we don't like. It's not good. What did we do wrong? And come to find out that it's, we tried another beer and we're like, it tastes like the fucking beer we made. And it was the coriander and the coriander was throwing us off. So I'm not, a, I am, I've, I've Belgian whip beers, they're hit or miss for me. This yeah. one, I would say, even with how strong the coriander is, um, with how light it is, and that floral, which I'm assuming is the lavender at the end, I'd have another one of these. I don't know if I would, uh, you know, go crazy and, and and drink it all the time, but it's it's I like the the Door County Trolley uh, Lager. That was that I drink all the time. This yeah. is this is good. Um, this one this one I would categorize as like interesting. Like you're not mm-hmm. gonna find I mean I don't I can't think of another beer that's like this that I've had. Yeah. I'd want other people to try it for sure. Like in a good way. Like <laughs> oh you, like it like you said, that's it definitely under uh interesting. There's coriander in pedestrian. Is it really? Mm-hmm. Huh. Well, I guess so. And I think we did it on the original batch too. Yeah. Yeah, I did. But we didn't toast it. Right. And then I right, to- toast so, so I toast the coriander and drop it in there and but it and it's not enough. I I feel like the the malt bill and everything else kind of going on it like the alcohol mm, that's in it. Yeah. Um masks you know, it's masked enough to where you don't notice it. It lends to the flavor. I mean, not masked do... as much as it like blends in yeah, yeah, everything yeah, else. Yeah. yeah, you don't want it masked, but it it, it complements everything really well. Coriander you. Yeah. yeah. And Oof. Like I, was, I think it has to be done right. Like, yeah, I and you have to like coriander. You know, yeah. it, it's not something that you can just throw in and be like, "Here you go." Well, when coriander. I hear Belgian wit, I, yeah. I think coriander. So, well, what I was uh, hinting at, so the two breweries that started in 2012, they both kind of have like that classic like brew pub, yeah, you know, style like a wit beer and a cherry lager. Like those are very to me like old school craft beer, sure brew pub. Especially with beer, I think with beer and yeah. lager having those. Like, I remember the. I mean, I remember the first time I had when three one two was brand new from Goose oh, yeah. Island. That was like, whoa, this is amazing. Or, or Oberon uh, having Oberon, even still have, still having Oberon is, is still a really good wheat beer. But they're, you know, they're wheat beers, not wheat beers, right? Is wheat beer wheat, like a spiced wheat beer? Is that kind of how it is? I believe. Oh, yeah, I, think. <laughs> I think wit comes under. I think wit means that it's a Belgian wheat beer. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, which would not... be different than an actual wheat beer. Right. Well, because the wit means wheat. Yeah. Well, but that's lending, lending its, you know, that goes along with the... the it's a wheat beer that is top fermented beer, which is brewed with a large portion of wheat relative to the amount of malted barley. The two main varieties are German Weissen beer and Belgian wit beer. Other types uh, include Lambic, Berliner Weiss, and the Goes. Uh, so, or ghost, how do you pronounce that? So, yeah, wit beer is a wheat beer. Yeah. Which just had the the Belgian pills, malt, and uh, wheat. So, yeah. Um, I I really do like this, though. I just I don't want to give people a... Yeah, I don't think... I yeah. Because I don't... I mean, I don't... 
Yeah, Tony's just a hater. Come on, man. We're being nice this episode, you fucking fascist. Uh, <laughs> this, I, I like this. <laughs> Two times. <laughs> Two times. <laughs> it was the first time I said it. It's on this episode. Right. Uh, he's not a fascist, you guys. Um, th- I just because I don't really care for it. Like I said, I would, I would, I would definitely drink it again, but I'm not gonna run out and buy it. But I think, I think this would, for a lot of people, this is a beer that would hit to, or scratch an itch that people are looking. Yeah, for. Su- surprisingly, uh, I enjoyed it. Um, kind of getting that hit of coriander at first took me a second, but uh, yeah, I would, I would definitely drink this again more often. You know, than some other beers, like sure. you know, and Dan just, just poured himself a shot of vodka to get the lends, him, out of lends mouth. itself to a beer that you can drink on a hot summer day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is a good summer. Actually, these two beers are, are good summer beers. Yeah, I mean, they're probably I don't know if they're both seasonal, but I mean, they're, they're a lot cherry lager for sure was. I don't think that that said it was seasonal, but I mean, I want to get that fucking Palette Jack IPA from them, easy drinking IPA. Whoa, That's this really was good. brewed in April. The cherry lager. What's that one? Canned on 421 2022. Yeah. Oh, nice. So this is. Not, I mean, as a, as a whip beer, though, I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. That's. They're, the IPAs are really the one beer that I'm very, like, fucking adamant about getting as fresh as possible. Yeah. I have a hard time with, like, two month old IPA sitting on the shelf. This yeah. is interesting here. I know we were just talking about the Madison location with the one barrel. So this says brewed and packaged by Door County Brewing Company, Bailey's Harbor, which is where I went, and Sheboygan, which is a little south where like Three Sheeps is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A little south of Door County. Sheboygan. Hmm. Uh, so I didn't, I mean, maybe they're brewing out of Three Sheeps even because I know they have a, I've stopped by there before. They have a pretty big space there. So who knows? I haven't had any Three Sheeps beer in a while. I haven't either. I don't think they're down here very much anymore. I don't, I don't think so. Velvet Hammer, was that there? Like Stout or something? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Well, in any case, yeah. I think we need to take a break. Um, because i got to get back in my zen mode and, and not be angry at you like I always am. <laughs> it's the coriander, man. You brought it out. No, you brought it out of me. Brought it out of me, Dan. And I was trying to keep it bottled up. But despite all my rage, still just a rat in a cage. We'll be right back. We're taking a trip through Door County, Wisconsin. Thanks, Dan. Dan, even though you just passed this bottle to me, I was going to ask you, what are we drinking? All right. I had it pulled up a second ago. It is... Yeah, it's one of those bottles where we all get a nice pour. I like this. I can pass it back to you. You can have it right in front of you. All right. So this is from Hacienda Beer Co. This is Astonishing Foresight, 6.3% farmhouse ale. It is a blend of one, two, and three year aged, 100% spontaneously fermented beer, originally brewed in 2018, 19, and 20. The beer was brewed with our uh, with our Bailey's Harbor well water, spoiler Ooh. alert, 
Pilsner Mall and Well Water? Week. What? <laughs> oh, no, I meant that they're in Bailey's Harbor. Each batch spent a night in our cool ship to naturally cool and inoculate with local microflora Love cool ships. before spontaneously fermenting and aging in oak barrels for over two years. No yeast or bacteria was ever intentionally pitched into this beer. After blending, we naturally re-fermented the beer over many months in the bottle. So this um, Hacienda Beer Company was founded in 2018, and it is a offshoot of Door County Brewing. Really? Yeah. And that was kind of like their, they were going to do like hazies, sours, like that kind of thing. And so... Um, it's like Hubbard's Caves, Unani. Unani. Unani's yeah. Hubbard's Caves. Yeah. 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 yeah, whatever. We knew what you meant. Um, the first smell that I got from that, I was like, ooh, this is funky. Like, in a good way, you know, a little sour funkiness going on. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm really impressed after hearing the description of how this beer came to be. It's really delicious. Yeah. Like, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this was, what was the beer that we had from uh, Green, the Green, Green Bench? Bench? Yeah. Um, it was something to do with the Decahedrons. Yes, that's right. Dice. I don't remember what it was That, uh, as far as beers that you've brought, this is maybe number two of All the right. best beers that, I mean, you've brought some really good beers, but it's ones that pop out. Like if I went through a list, maybe, but like ones that stand out, it's that one and then this one. This is really good. This is really, really what, good. What shocked me on this was how um, funky it smells, but it's you're expecting like a sour or something like that, and it's it's it it's there, but it's not overpowering. It's really light and smooth, and yeah, dude, this is something that yeah. starts with the letter B. Um, Brandon, balanced. Mm. No, it's not, it's not. I wouldn't say it's balanced, but it's, <laughs> it's balanced for a sour. I was going to say best. <laughs> but even uh, like if you let it sit in your mouth, you get, it feels like you're drinking like a super sour beer. Like I get it on the side of my tongues, but it's super juicy. It's mm-hmm. super like refreshing. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, This is really good beer. It's like a nice, it's like, reminds me of like if you drink a good wine, you know, like I think that's why I like about wild fermented beers is that are spontaneous fermented beers like wild ales you all there's like this taste that i get it's just like it's like a it's like almost like natural fruit type like aftertaste yeah and and like, that's I what know, i think i really enjoy or yeah peach or something I don't yeah know. the fruits are hard for me to to pick out but it's really refreshing i could i mean what's like six and a half percent you said mm-hmm. and that's the highest alcohol of the beer so far and this is um I could I could easily drink that entire bottle. Uh, yeah, myself. and just the fact that it was all cool ships like spontaneously yeah. fermented, but they didn't intentionally pitch any cool. is awesome yeast. Yeah, which uh, a cool ship. If you, I mean, you probably know if you're listening, but it's like a giant metal tub that's a couple feet deep, maybe at the most, and then the beer cools and collects, like they said, all the micro stuff that's floating in the air around the area. So it gives it a um, a sense of uh, terroir, as they say in wine. Oh, oh. <clears throat> Jeez, um, and and here. going back to like when he was reading the description, it is brewed with Bailey's Harbor well water. Yeah, that's right. So there's yeah, there's a lot of natural things going on with this beer, and uh, for them to like this be the the product, holy shit! Yeah. And they have just to let you know, like this beer, occasionally Hacienda gets dropped in Chicago. My buddy actually gave me this beer for my birthday. He got it at Beer on the Wall. Nice. And I think it's still there. Um, what? But yeah, it's very, very good that beer. Might have to get it more. Yeah, but so they brew. I don't know if they brew out of the same. I think they brew out of the same one as Door County Brewing. But uh, if you go to Door County Brewing, they have like two menus, like the Door County one and then the the Hacienda one. And they're both in the same cooler if you go in there. Fantastic. That's I will, awesome. I might have to stop by Beer on the Wall and see if they've got any more of these because I did not. Uh, yeah, maybe they did. Maybe I did see it because the, even when you pulled the bottle out, I'm like, oh, the label looks kind of familiar. So if they have it. I might, I might grab, grab one. This is it's really good. I really, really, really like this beer. I could drink a lot of these. Yeah, uh, I've I've liked a lot of Hacienda stuff that I've had. Um, they do a lot of saisons and sours and all that. Uh, they also do, like I said, a lot of hazies. I can't remember if I've even had any of their hazies, but um, I really like. Um, what they're doing saison wise and sour wise. There's like this grape, like like yeah, like a 
white wine character. Yeah. yeah. I think that that's what's standing out the most to me for this beer. Like, Brandon, you're right. Like, letting it sit in your mouth, you get the, the tartness of it. But really, like, right off the bat, it's like this nice white wine that I, has a little, like, earthiness to it. To kind of play off of that, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but I feel like it's low carb. Like, it's not. Yeah, it's absolutely. not super carb, but. So it's almost still like a white wine. This is great. It's a low carb beer. No, no, that's not what he meant. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, yeah, you're you're absolutely right. It, there's not a lot of carbonation in this beer. It's it's lightly carbonated, yeah. um, which I think does, I I feel like too much carbonation in this you would lose some of those subtle characteristics. Yeah, yeah. The subtle flavors that I'm getting from it. Good job, Dan. Yeah, this one's know. yeah. Thanks, and this one yeah is more of a. This is my uh, top for the night, I would say. So yeah, far? yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely, no doubt. Um, jeez, that yeah. was really good. It's really good. You can't, you can't like chug it. I feel like it's like mm-hmm. a little too like tart, complex to like chug it. Yeah, but it's really delicious sipper. It's funny because you guys have fit like this is the first one of the first times, not one of the first times ever, but like normally I'm one of the first people to finish the beer on the show, and I. And keeping like I keep taking small sips because I really like it, but I also don't want to finish it. Because... Some more in the bottle. Yeah, we'll save it for later. Yes. QV with the Fishers party peanuts. Fishers, there's a party in every nut. <laughs> we do have Fishers party peanuts though. Sorry, uh, you know what, planners? You didn't get to us. You didn't. You didn't reach out. So I'm gonna try Fisher Party Peanuts. Tony's moved on. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just not that into you. <laughs> Thanks right. for laughing at that, Dan. I appreciate. It. I know. I like. By the way, any anybody listening, Dan has not shown us any beer. He's being very like secretive and pulling it but out. He's also very much out. like, let's keep this moving. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I, I, no, he I was ready to go. Wanna... It was good, but he does have well. a bag. He's pulling these out, so we have no idea what we're drinking. All right, Dan, uh, we're ready so, for um, the next one. Is this the this, last one, too? Yeah, this is the last right. one. So uh, this is from Sway Brewing Company, which was started in uh, 2022, in June. So very new brewery. Bless you, Brandon, by the way. And um, <laughs> this is called... Lovely strawberries. Okay. It is a barrel fermented saison with local strawberries. Interesting. A blended beer brewed with barley, spelt wheat, and Wisconsin hops, fermented with our house mixed culture in oak barrels, uh, before re-fermenting on local strawberries. Brewed and canned by Sway Brewing Company and blending. Uh, Sway Brewing and blending in Bailey's Harbor, Wisconsin. And um, I'm sorry. I was just. This beer is re-fermented and naturally carbonated in this can. Yeast sediment will form. Chill well before serving. All right. So Sway is 100% brewer owned and operated and creates simple, easygoing beers. We believe beer should be an accent to experience, a facilitator of connection, a thoughtful balance. Sip of Sway in good company. Hmm. Well, we are all in good company right now. So yeah. time Man. to sip that Sway. This I have not hey, had this beer, but I did stop here. And um, maybe one of the, my most like in my element breweries i've ever been to but let me let me, let me start by saying Wait, so sway what's your element <laughs> what would you say is your element dan sway was founded by i just had his name up and i closed my phone like an idiot um idiot sway was founded by matt sampson who is the barrel guy at hacienda brewing company Ooh. And he uh, wanted to be able to, he still works at Hacienda, and he wanted to be able to sort of like go his own way, sort of make whatever he kind of wanted to. So he does this little side project, not to use the name of a different brewery, but where he brews and ages his beer in the same small little like garage area that Hacienda does. And it's like next to a restaurant that was closed when I was there. But he had, it was their Oktoberfest night. He had a guy playing uh, records, like a DJ, vinyl DJ, was playing records uh, there. And it had an like, outdoor patio. There's no indoor area. Uh, and the head brewer is the only one that's there, like, serving the beers. So he Whoa. was super cool and talking, like, talked to me. And uh, the DJ was really cool, too. He was uh, playing a lot of stuff from that is hip-hop, or sampled in hip-hop and stuff like that. Really? So he had really new stuff. He had, 
he had these sticky notes. This is, we're nerding out right now, Tony yeah, and I. Sorry. He had these sticky notes on his records, and it was a lot of like jazz and funk and jazz funk stuff. And then he had sticky notes for every song that was on there that was sampled and like who sampled it and what song it was. And all That's that stuff. super cool. Yeah, I was like, oh. I need to do that. Okay, so I haven't had this beer before, and I haven't even taken a sip yet, but go ahead. Brandon, guys. you took a sip, and you smelled it. What do you think while we stop nerding It's out lovely. <laughs> That's it. Um, it, it is actually, uh, it, it's, it's got that, it, it lends to that funkiness, um, and it's, it's tart, but I feel like that tartness is coming from the strawberries and it's got a really good strawberry flavor. Like that's what's prominent and that's what I, I'm enjoying about this. This is, this was really good. I want everyone to know that Dan lost his mind. I think he cra- crapped his pants when he took a, a sip. Like, I've never seen Dan so excited over a beer while so, you were reading that description. Or you're giving your uh, yeah. review on it, Brandon. I, when I was there, I had the Oktoberfest and I had their table beer, which was, both of those were awesome. So I just knew, like, from the description of this brewery and everything that they brew, it's another, it kind of like, if you're from Chicago, like an is was esque brewery that does a lot of different types of saisons and i knew this was going to be awesome just because i knew he worked at hacienda and that's where he was getting like cutting his chops and yeah it's awesome and strawberry is such a difficult fruit in beer for me like to have like beers i've had unless it's like a stout where it's like that like candy strawberry but this is truly like a fresh strawberry flavor it's really good it is um you can smell the strawberry in there, I have to imagine. I, I can't imagine how many strawberries they used on it um, or the, in this beer. The farmer, from, so I didn't know this while I was there. But there was this, there was this older guy there when I was there talking to the head brewer for a long time, and then I saw him post like the day after I was there. It was the farmer from the that gave him the strawberries. Oh wow! Oh nice. Yeah, so it was like truly like some guy he knew like from down the street or whatever. Okay, we want a whole bunch of your strawberries. Yeah. It's really good. It is really tasty. It, the The strawberry really comes through. Um, Brett, I get a little bit of Brett, a little yeah. tartness. The I burnt myself on on saisons a long time ago, and I haven't really come back. I think I've told you this before, yeah. Um, and maybe on the show. Uh, so to have something like this, that was, as I'm drinking it, it's like I need to revisit saison. Well, I mean, yeah. I know this is very different. Saison is such an expansive style. Like yeah. even if you think of the last beer we just had, and then this one. Yeah, they're like exactly. Way That's what I mean, like totally different. And I feel like I need to go back and maybe give saisons a, another try because this is this is really 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 tasty. But this goes back into that same argument about like who's arguing? We don't argue on this fucking argue. show. <clears throat> but, well, like your your original distaste for lagers, and then having some like. Good really good lagers, you know, just makes you want to go back. And I'm kind of in the same camp. Like, I enjoy a Saison. It's not my go-to. It's not something I can drink all the time. But when you get something like this, this is just, like, it It piques the interest. And, like, not that I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to go find a random Saison. I want to find a beer that plays with fruits. You know, that's a Saison that plays with fruits. Like, it's, I could see this being re- really done really well if they used, like, blueberries or like you know other, like other fruits yeah, yeah my mind just sure. goes all over the place with fruits and then it comes all the way back and i'm like what can we brew like with fruit to get that solid fruit flavor man that is just so freaking good um and it, it's it's funny because I, I keep i'm looking at the can and i see it says lovely i'm like everything i want to say it's like it's so lovely um <laughs> but it, it it is man this is this is a great beer and like uh, I will give a a uh, big kudos to that man. Like, good freaking job, man. Yeah. And this, as as someone who's like a preacher of saisons, which I think most people know probably now if you're listening, but there's a lot of people that do really bad saisons too, like the overly yeasty saisons. Fucking. Animal. This is such like a delicate, like beautiful <clears throat> version of. The you style. mean a lovely yeah version? Of how the how do we tell Dan that the analytics? Prove that people tune out when Dan starts talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's awful. I shouldn't have laughed at that, but he's right. People do. Yeah. Um, okay, real side side question, like side question, based off of what you know. We know that you love saison. So if you if you is that your would you say that that would be like if you had to choose one style, okay, style of beer, that yeah, you would 
drink all the time. You're on an island. Yeah. You have one style. That's it. Saison. But yeah, because saison. I mean, like I was just saying. I mean, you could have like a table saison, which is like three percent alcohol. And sure. Then you could have like a dark Belgian saison. It's like eight percent plus. Like there's such yeah, a I've wide. Had, I've had a very. I've had a dark like high alcohol. It's from Texas. Uh, Saint Arnold, maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. I have to remember. But I, I got it in a beer. Could have so. been Jester King too. Yeah. Uh, I think it was Jester King. They have that like heavy metal. One that was what it was. Yeah. Uh, that was really fucking good. Yeah, I mean it's such a wide sway of beers in that style. Sway, sway, sway. yeah. Sway, sway, sway. Uh, Brandon, <laughs> if you had to choose one style, what would it be? Like a go-to style that like you're on a, you're on an island and whoever put you on this island that asshole. But it's also very nice to say, hey, you get one beer style to drink the whole time you're here, and that's it. Oh god, that's a dude. That's really fucking tough for me because I feel like I, en- I enjoy so many styles, and I'm surprised. I surprise myself when I crave something. Like there's there's nights I'll sit down, you know, I'm down here doing stuff, whatever, um, and I'll grab like the Kolsch I have on tap, and I'll have that. I'm like, this is good, and then it's like, my mind immediately goes to I want something hoppy, and then but there's also nights where it's like I'll have that, and I'm like. I want something barrel aged. I want something this that. Um, I, I would. I, I I can eliminate ones that I would not want. I would not like if I was on an island. Sure as hell, I ain't taking a barrel aged beer with me. You um, idiot! It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> um, although those do taste good warm. Mm-hmm. I don't know about hot, but warm. Cool. Um, yeah, I, I honestly don't think I could answer that question. Um, Theoretically, without, like if you can change your, you can change yeah. your mind later. But like as of right now, would there be a style in mind that you'd like that I could, I could, I could just drink? And do you mean like, do you mean specifically on an island? Do you mean like, like when people say like your island albums or whatever, like where it's like this is the only kind of style you're ever gonna have again? Yeah, yeah not, like, not yeah, that you're yeah. like thinking about the environment. Of no, it. no, no, like this yeah. is the only thing you're gonna have like yeah. for, like, for the rest no, of your I, life. I go deep. I'm like, <laughs> fuck yeah, island, salt water, God damn hot it. pilsner or pale ale. Yeah. Yeah. Got Jack Sparrow missing the rum, like, um, yeah. You know what? I, I you kind of like pale ale probably would be yeah. Pale ale is a good pick. because it's you know there's nothing like th- there's a lot of flavors you can get from pale ales, and there's a lot of way you can a lot of ways you can play with them. But I feel like that would be like pretty good. Like I could live with myself if if I had pale ales. Like, yeah. So recently, someone we I don't know who I was talking to. I think it was my wife. About like if I had to, if I was on an island and I had to eat one food for the rest of my life, it used to I used to say pizza, because pizza you can it's universal. You can put like any toppings on pizza. Yeah. It wasn't like yeah, you know, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Like it's so like when you say pale ale, you you're stuck eat- on an island with a pizza maker <laughs> or a pizza machine and a bunch of dough. It's a pizza vending machine and a garden. But like you said, you know, there's the different types of saisons that you can have. Pale ale. Pale ale is across the board, like a pale ale, but there's fun things you can do with a pale ale. You got like a yeah, like a more West Coast leaning, like American pale ale, right? Like there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. Ale. I'm well, sure there's because if you Belgian pale ale, you can call or... things a pale ale and then be yeah. three Floyds, and then it's like mm-hmm. yeah, calling yeah. you out again, three Floyds. But so I ended up changing it to sandwiches, by the way, just so you guys know, because sandwiches, I feel like a sandwich is more universal than a pizza, where I literally can like you have sand like sandwich is the ultimate meal. Ice cream sandwich? Yeah. Ice cream. Boom. Look, Dan. Okay. You have just redeemed at least one episode of me hating you right there. Good call. So I would say that as far as style goes for me, I pro- Pale Ale is, 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 is very close. I would honestly, and I kind of like had to think about it as I asked you guys, like I kept playing in my head what it would be. It would be IPA. Because there are different versions of IPAs that I can go with. Like almost more so than pale ale. You know yeah. what I mean? I yeah. do love pale ales. Pale ale is probably my favorite. I mean, I, we've talked about it too. Pale ale is probably my favorite style of beer to drink. But for the varieties that you can get from an IPA, double, triple, hazy, uh, cold IPA. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's but uh, brood IPAs. Is that still a thing? Uh, hazy, you know, our milkshake IPA. There's literally like, uh, <laughs> I know, there's there's literally a shit ton of different IPAs. It, it's and funny. I just, I like the hoppiness. Yeah, and it's funny that you said that because IPA was what I was thinking of. But in my head, I was thinking just IPA. 
I was like, oh, I can't have a double or a triple. Or no, 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 no. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's style. If I could have that, yeah, then, yeah. I mean, like, then I'd probably go It also would take in, you know, the other sub-styles. And I'm glad when Dan had said Cezanne, he goes, well, yeah, there's different Cezannes you can have. You could have, a, you know, a dark Belgian Cezanne or, you know, whatever. So that's kind of what I meant. Which I mean, because then I could have said, like, Belgian. And go yeah. from, like, you know, Absolutely. double, triple, quads. Here's the know. thing, though. Here's the thing for me. But even then, I wouldn't, I, no, I wouldn't take that. There are there are times in my life, and I'm just just uh, playing devil's advocate on Brandon's side here. But there's times in my life where I'm like, I don't want an IPA. Absolutely, but there's never been a time in my life where I. Well, that's why I said like, right I don't now, want a pale ale. at this moment. Like yeah. at this moment, you're on an island. Pale ales are like good all the time. Yeah, that's true. Like pale ales really are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pale ales are are, are the is the best. Yeah, I mean that's ever. why I went pale. Yeah. Ale. You know, but you know, but then thinking about it, like the style wise of IPA, yeah, you could go, you know, that. But um, I'll stick with Pale though, because yeah, absolutely, I think I think that's a, that's the right choice. Brandon and I are right. I you oh, know, sorry. Okay. You know, I'm not nobody gonna, said you we were wrong. <laughs> I am not even going to dignify that with the response, Dan. But I will say thank you for. Uh, doing this episode, uh, uh, bringing it to, together and grabbing all these beers, they were all very good overall. I I, I would, except for the yeah, what, what order would you put them in if somebody walked up on the street? <laughs> um, fuck, that's tough. I've got an order. Uh, I would say what was the last one we had? The lovely strawberries. No, no, the one after before that. Oh, haciendas. Which one's the hacienda? Was that astonishing called? foresight? The Ast- astonishing the foresight. Yeah. It'd be astonishing foresight. The lovely strawberry, the cherry lager, and then the li- little sister um, Belgian wine. That Agreed. Is the order. I so the one and two are really close. I think I put the lovely strawberries ahead. Yeah, when you buy a little cook bit. your pants over it, I was like, that's his <laughs> yeah. number one. I mouthed, holy shit! Yeah, like he threw himself like back physically. I've he never, died. I really, yeah, he died and then came back. Like I, honestly, yeah. I've never seen Dan react to that. I'm not. No, kidding. that was that. That and the green bench, I'd have to like really think about which one. Whoa, would be like, one. Dan, throwing out some early multis yeah. information but right anyways, there. Anyways, anyways, um, sorry, I'm having some more yeah, fish those two. And then I'd have to honestly think about the cherry and the uh, the wit. Really? Yeah, the wit was so unique to me. The cherry was like very subtle, so it was kind of like eh, you don't you don't really get it. It's a really delicious beer. You can drink a lot of it. The wit though was very like unique. So what, what, what's it going to be, Dan? I'll go, this... I'll go with the wit and, and then the cherry. But they're, one and two are really close, and then three and four are really close. One and two are very close for me as well. Like, that strawberry was really, really good. Um, I just never know what you're going to get with the strawberry beer. I'm yeah. always, like, nervous. And, and they, like, did it, they did it very well. Yeah, I was like, oh, whoa. I also think that the experience you had there kind of helps play. To, yeah. It seemed like you had a nice time there. Yeah. And it's a good place. It was. So. And I actually was, uh, I was, like, Chit chatting with these two guys who were just like standing on the side, and they were one of them was a packaging guy for Hacienda, and the other guy was like a barrel warehouse guy for Hacienda. So it was like that's kind of just like a cool little experience I got to have there. Well, Dan, you did a fine job. Thank you, thank you. You get to keep your job here at the Malting Hour for another month. I passed. You did. Um, He's I would, coming with us to Denver, so we can't have a choice. Well, I was just going to say, like, uh, at this point, by the time this um, I'll say album, this episode's out, we've already been to the Great American Beer Fest. So uh, I was going to say you should come and find us, but uh, I hope you found us. I hope you found us at the Great American Beer Fest, and we're going to have a little recap episode, and I hope you guys followed us in, on our adventure. Um, I'm going to assume it was a good time. Yeah, and, look for... Uh, I'll be posting on Instagram. I'm sure they will too. It's, so. we're our, this, we'll this episode is out after we've already oh, been there. Yeah, you're right. My bad. You know? Jeez, Dan. Hey, can you, can you edit that? You just lost half a month oh, of work. I forgot. You, you don't. Shut no. up. Okay. <laughs> you know what? We're back to being a dick to Dan from here on out. Dan sucks. This episode was weak. Uh, Brandon, love you, ma'am. Love you too, bud. Dan, get it together. Thank you. This has been The Malting Hour. Be sure to follow us on all social media by searching The Malting Hour and at themaltinghour.com. 
You can also follow us individually on social media. Brandon can be found on Instagram as BMW81, on Twitter, BW81, and on Untapped as BW Drinks Beer. Tony can be found on Instagram and Untapped under Ace of Help Chicago, on Twitter, The Ace of Help Chicago. Clark can be found as Clarkowski on all three. Dan can be found on Instagram as hip underscore underscore hops and hip hops on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe, like, and rate the show on your preferred podcast listening platform. Until next time, cheers from all of us at the Malting Hour. Thank you.